Night Creepers Written by David Irons Read by Roxy Drive Prologue Summertime 1998 Six bucks? What the hell can you even buy with six bucks? Peter Kerry threw the broom across the dusty old shed, watched as it rebounded off the mountainous stack of newspapers piled to the old sagging roof. Sarah Jones, the girl who always had blonde pigtails and chewed gum, laughed, clapping her hands and watching the vaporous mist of dust motes explode from her fingers in the afternoon sun. The pair of them had been recruited by their mums to clear out old Mrs Baker's shed, well, Shed seemed too posh a word for the derelict shack they stood in now. It was the size of an apartment. Three well-spaced rooms brimming with archaic debris from the old woman's life. Crystal radio sets, valve TV sets, grandfather clocks with sprung innards. The years-old stench of rot attacked the insides of their nostrils as if festering cacti had been inserted into them. The taste at the back of their throats, a dry, woody tang. Six bucks? What's it worth? Peter said. A McDonald's and a comic book? A few games down the arcade? A ticket to see some bullshit movie? Fuck me. If I asked my old man for that chump change, he would toss it to me. Another voice entered the conversation, one that turned both their faces sour. It's not bad. I mean, our moms did ask us to help Mrs. Baker. I didn't even know we were getting paid, Jennifer Blue said. Shut up, Peter sneered, as Sarah shook her head, face puckered as her pigtails hit her cheeks. The three of them were acquainted with one another from school, Peter and Sarah being friends from fifth grade, Jennifer Blue a new arrival six months ago in seventh grade. She had even moved in to Max Foster's house at the end of the block. Max was one of the guys, one of the boys. Max was the kid all the girls called a babe, or hot stuff. Now Max was gone, moved to Idaho, and his replacement, the scrawny, red-haired girl that stood before them now. Jennifer knew the eyes they gave her. They were one of the most pervasive things in her time here in California, the same eyes transferring from skull to skull, face to face, eyes that said, Who are you, Jennifer Blue? Not one of them, that was for sure. God, she missed Boston. Why couldn't they have stayed in Boston? You'll fit in, honey. It just takes time, Mum said. It's normal to be the odd one out to begin with, Dad had said. Time had passed. Other new kids had come, but her ridicule hadn't gone. Maybe we can turn you upside down and use that ginger mop to sweep the floor with, Jennifer, Peter grinned. Yeah, like go put a fucking hat on. Your hair is hurting my eyes. Sarah groaned. It's offensive. Good one! <laughs> Peter snorted. Jennifer clenched her fists three times, words echoing in her mind. Ignore it. Ignore it. Ignore it. I'm done with this BS, Peter said, hawking another loogie on the floor. Tell the old bag she can keep the six bucks. I've had it. Yeah, really, Sarah said, rolling her eyes. Hey, come on, we can't let Mrs. Baker down. The words spilled honestly from Jennifer's mouth, an internal wince squeezed just as authentically. Mrs. Halfbeg, more like, Peter said. The old bag can hardly walk, can hardly think. Let's just tell her we're done, take the cash and blow this pop stand. That's not fair, echoed in Jennifer's mind. She clenched her fists three times. Ignore it, ignore it. Ignore it. She didn't have to say anything. They saw the words in her mind splash on her face. Jesus, why were they stuck here with this little ass kisser on a Saturday afternoon? An idea struck Peter. 
charged his bones with childish meanness like a lightning bolt. It infected Sarah, a devilish flare making her eyes ignite and her lips gasp. She knew what he was thinking, the meanness becoming an infection. Well, okay, we'll stay, Peter smiled, trying to hide the grin that ate away behind his lips. But you have to help us with something around the corner. Sure, Jennifer said. The quickest of looks shared by Peter and Sarah. A spark of their individual meanness arced and conjoined. They moved behind the huge stacks of symmetrically stacked newspapers. Printed columns that seemed to hold the shack's roof up. There, in between them, near the back, stood an old rusted red locker. A tall six-foot structure that needed to be put back into the ground of the amount of corrosion that ate away at it. That thing! We were going to clean that out. Want to help? Peter said. She knew she didn't trust them, could feel herself not trusting them as they led her grinning towards the locker. But she still walked forward, didn't engage with her better judgment, common sense displaced for an empty autopilot. It's pretty ganky, said Sarah, nothing genuine about her tone. Yeah, take a look, Peter said. And before she could think, before she could react, before she could clench her fists three times, Peter pushed Jennifer forward as the locker's door was yanked by Sarah. She hurtled inside, head slamming straight into its back. The door quickly shoved shut by them both. Then, complete darkness, echoing whimpers not manifesting in her mind, but exiting her lips. How do you like that, ginger freak? <laughs> Sarah laughed. Peter locking the door from the other side. Hey! Jennifer called, banging on the cold steel door, throat immediately feeling as restricted as the rest of her body in the tight space. Please! She pleaded, bald fists banging the door, the reverberating sounds of her pounding filling her ears. I wouldn't do that, Peter said. It's not like you're in there alone. What are you? Jennifer blurted. Look up! Sarah giggled. Jennifer did, eyes wide and readjusting like the lenses of a movie camera. There was nothing, just cold, endless darkness. Just that mouldy smell intensified. Just then she saw it. The thickest, grimmest cacophony of spider webbing she had ever seen, like a steel haze of fog, or an ethereal mist frozen in time. It was a disgusting blanket of spinneret secretion that with each knock of her hands began to quiver, and at its edges, long, thin, hairy legs began to protrude from the sickening edge of darkness. Got some new friends in there, Jennifer Blue? <laughs> Sarah laughed. Please? Jennifer whispered, shrinking down to the floor as far as possible, watching as above the webbing bowed pregnantly, dipping as its silky mass was weighed down by the biggest spiders Jennifer had ever seen began to fill its space. Little taps rattled out on the other side of the locker, both Peter and Sarah singing in rhythmic child rhyme as they patted their fingers against the cold metal. Night creepers, night creepers, creeping up your nose, wriggling through your body, wriggling to your toes. A scared seriousness whistled past Jennifer's teeth. Please let me out! Each of the arachnid's eight eyes seemed to shine with a deep black opal desire, seemed to stare straight into her as she stared back. Please! She whined. They didn't stop. Night creepers, night creepers, creeping through your hair, or running down your body. Everywhere. From above, eight-legged bodies began to descend, opened wide like reaching claws. Legs spread as if to smother their prey, ready to catch the girl who had entered their domain. It was like a bad dream, a vile nightmare that had bled to life. Night creepers, night creepers used to be a pest, but now they're always with you because you are their nest. Have fun, loser! 
Peter called, the pair laughing, running for the shed's door, leaving her locked in the locker. Locked in the locker, locked in darkness, locked with the... Nine creepers, nine creepers! Why did they learn that awful song? Why was this happening? The spiders knew someone was there. They were only coming out to greet her. All marble eyes, all spindly legs, all furry bodied. They lowered themselves on their webs past the locker's small vents, where slats of sunlight beamed through it. It cast ghastly shadows of the beasts. Eight spiders were coming down, growing bigger as they descended towards her. Tears began to bead from her eyes. Skin itchy, goosebumps rising. She had hated spiders, insects and creepy crawly things. Had they both known? Night creepers, night creepers! It was an octagon of oversized arachnids, a mass of dangling legs coming down from each side. She wanted to puke, wanted to vomit the fear that bred inside her, but didn't want to open her mouth, just in case. Night creepers, night creepers, creeping up your nose, wriggling through your body, wriggling to your toes. She tried to fiddle with the inside of the lock, could see its mechanism scraping up. If only she had something, anything to give it that extra leverage to slide between door and jam, to pop it up, to pop it open. She would do anything, anything. Please help me! She bawled, waiting for the inevitable, waiting for the eight-legged beast to be on her. She put her hand to the floor of the locker, expecting more of the same, more awful insect life to touch her back. But there, beneath her right hand, was what felt like a rigid piece of card, something thin and flat, something that could be used to open the lock. She sprung to action, slipped it in the jam, pushed up, pushed hard, a slight metallic click entering her ears, a squirt of light feeling around the door as it creaked ajar. Falling forward, falling free, she had escaped. Rubbing her hair, looking at her hands, expecting spiders, finding nothing. She looked over her shoulder, the locker door closing shut like a door to a mausoleum, an eerie whine commencing with its final click, the nightmare locked away inside where it belonged. She breathed out, shivered, sighed, looked down at what was in her hand. It was a card, not a playing card what looked like a tarot card, old and worn. A grinning face stared from it, a red face, slicked backed hair, thin moustache, pointed eyebrows that matched the horns protruding from the head. It was dead centre in the card, one eye winking, the other seemingly staring straight at her. She knew the face, somehow knew all the names that went with it. Old Scratch, Old Gooseberry, Old Thorn, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, the Devil. Underneath his grinning face, a slogan written on a curling scroll. Come on down. A wind seemed to find its way into the old shed, seemed to flitter the card, folding it, making it look like the devil was winking at her. And as he did, Jennifer Blue whispered the only thing she could. Thank you. In her head, a reply echoed out in a voice that wasn't her own. No problem. She was away from the descending arachnids, free from the confines of the locker, and in a way, she owed him one. In a way, she had made a deal. In a way, he had saved her. And one day, she would have to repay the favour. The copyright of this recording belongs to David Irons and Metropole Films. Night Creepers is available now from Severed Press. <laughs>